Hello. 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 <sighs> yeah, good. So I already have six and a half hours work behind me. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I actually contacted Tal. Uh, so I don't know. I, I said he is also welcome to join today, but uh, tomorrow we'll focus on the logic parts where he has something to say. I might skip tomorrow, I was going to say, because it's the, there's a big knowledge graph conference I'm likely to attend. All right, okay. Um, yeah, anyways, I, I hope uh, Tal will join more future meetings, so it should be fine. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about tomorrow, I should have gone. And I wasn't sure I'd go, and I'm still hesitating, to be honest, but it's <laughs> kind of major. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Then we'll do all the interesting stuff without you. Sounds good. <laughs> <Enjoy>. <laughs> uh, so logic and UX, I saw that there was a bit of discussion about, are we discussing UX broadly? Well, I did say I'd have a few things to say about UX, but it's true I didn't prepare that hugely in depth. Yeah, I thought about handing over the whole moderation to Stephen because he, UX guy here. What well, as, a, as Timothy highlighted in Hangouts, the, the point was to look specifically at UX in relation to uh, some of these very complicated models that we've been discussing recently to get a better grasp of what the actual use cases are from a user perspective. Because yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm very unclear there. Um, and I think it might do everyone good to, to go back to the drawing board quite literally. <laughs> That's fair. Um, there, there's many layers of UX and uh, yeah, no, I do have a lot to say about that, but I don't know if I should start or, well, okay. It, it's not that complicated, right? It, UX is all about, you, you want, you're want you implementing in a model because you want the system to do something. So you write a, a user story, I want blah, 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 so that. And then you draw just some mock-up that visualizes that situation, whoever is confronted with that situation, what that would look like. That, that's the task, basically, we have to go through. Yes. The, the visual imagination is definitely not my forte. <laughs> uh, so for me, it's complicated. The, 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 the so that part, yes, I relate to. But what I'm saying, and, and, and uh, I'll actually take a page from your book, uh, there's definitely distinct domains here. Uh, and, and the so that are slightly different and distinct domains. And I wonder if it has UX impact, like is there a UX where we do, like for example, I speak a lot about kind of a low level data model where we just, you know, align vocabularies and definitions versus the higher level where we speak about things such as predicates, causality and epistemic you know, are they the same level and are they the same UX? Probably not. But on the other hand, if they're too disjoint, it's probably harder to manipulate. So I, actually, that's a question to you because you've dealt a lot with, you, you keep speaking about domains. How is that handled in the UX level uh, when there's different domains and different levels, but, you know, we want users to be able to, uh, think about all those domains and are there, do they become different UX layers or not? Or the domains are totally unrelated to UX domains is simply an engineering thing where you split up concerns of a system into separate subsystems, basically. Right. That each have their own tech stack. Um, although there is some overlap if you consider DDD where each domain indeed has its own ubiquitous language, meaning that each domain a specific concepts that you bring forth. So if one domain is about creation, uh, the, the only thing that um, translates to your UX layer is the, the concepts that are represented in that domain. Right. But that, that's the only thing really. I mean, as, as far as domains from engineering, well, if you, you, you put it in an engineering perspective, there are different reasons from doing that than the reasons that we're giving, right? The reasons we're giving is, Slight in part to encapsulate 
groups of functionality, uh, more for the domain driven design approach that you were talking about, which is that we want to isolate discussions around concerns. Um, the other engineering reason that overlaps with this is that it is variability. Like when, when you create layers or separate domains, it's either for manageability or because you want to provide variability or flexibility, right? And in this case, that's being reflected in the statements that, well, I don't want to implement that, but you may, right? So in other words, sets of features that are everybody, you know, doesn't want to have to implement them. Right. Um, yeah. It, no, no. It, it's weird that, that the, what we're talking about, the base layer and the mapping to the base layer that we talked about last time, um, doesn't quite relate to that. It sort of doesn't, sort of doesn't. We have, we have to kind of figure that out still, but, but there's just a care to maybe keep a first version of the model of the argumentation modeling to be as simple as possible. But that's why you need whiteboards and UX. And I mean, the way to figure it out is really by starting to draw these interactions that you want to support in the first place to figure out it's by drawing the interactions, by imagining what a user would do that you can more easily like see what are the consequences of the action that the user does, like which other systems. I mean, it, it's much easier to start to understand how everything is coupled or decoupled, like what is truly separate and what, should, what isn't separate. And for me, at least, the easiest way to go about it is really by seeing what is it you want to support in the first place. Right. Um, because if you keep talking in the abstract, without thinking about how the user will interact with that, you're missing a whole lot of uh, side effects and, and responsibility that, that, that you just translate on the end user, et cetera. So but that's a fact. So, so let's, let's start, let maybe start about division of use cases and then the, the kind of use cases we all think. Well, that's, uh, that's a, that I'd like to have a separate meeting for that or do it after we do the main thing on the agenda here. Um, which is? which is much more specific. Um, the question was, um, why, what is the point of certain advanced um, formalizations? That was the question proposed by Stephen. It's like, why do, why do we want these formalizations if not for scoring? Um, and so what I did was take our, our standard com complex case of the lockdowns and tried to map, you know, I didn't, I didn't try to map real data, but I tried to map a, a representative example um, in debate map in different versions. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're stuck with the debate map model, um, but uh, I tried to show different approaches using the different structures as best I could within debate map that would help kind of illustrate how things might look. It, it um, you know, obviously I couldn't show ideas for um, ways to visualize this kind of structure, right? The UI around that kind of structure. But well, that's we when you go to the whiteboard where, where your current right. tools or whatever come short and we can jump to a whiteboard. Right, so, so first I just want to show the mapping and then we can yep. talk about it and, and uh, yeah, take it from there. But yeah, then after that, if we want to focus some time on UI and on domains and use cases, we can we can head off in that direction. Today, tomorrow, any other day as well. Yeah, I, I did say I couldn't make tomorrow. We missed that. I didn't see. Yeah. Uh, there's big knowledge graph conference. Oh. Well, I'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, I'm starting to feel under the weather, which is bad. Uh, but uh, let's let's get started. Um, and I'll, I'll start showing my screen, I guess. I have to find it. Oh, I found it. Okay. It's not, are you seeing anything? It's, I'm seeing my other desktop. Wait, now do you see it? It's loading. 
Yep, it's there. Okay. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie's lurking. <laughs> I am lurking because I'm juicing things and it's loud. Um, I, unfortunately, I've, I've been waiting to talk about this. And like I said, I'm, I'm not feeling myself all of a sudden. So I'll do my best here. Mm. Um, okay. So, you know, I just start with the top question that we, we bring up every time. I, I, I actually started one step higher, right? Which is the broader question. Should we lock down the economy to stop the spread of COVID-19? Um, you know, from this, one of the arguments would be the one we've been talking about, which is that the lockdown will be worth it in the number of lives it saves, right? Um, I threw an extra one in here just to say, you know, somebody could go, well, it won't end the pandemic. So no, we shouldn't. Um, and then I have on the pro side, different versions of the same, uh, the same argument from different ways of viewing it. Um, uh, man, I don't know what got into my head. Okay, so the first one is no curation. This is, this is the one that's like, um, it, imagine we have a very basic model. Actually, I, when I first started mapping this, I also did some multi-premise arguments in here, but this is like, you know, everybody just throwing in their arguments wherever they think they should, it should go, right? And it hasn't been curated yet. So this isn't to evaluate any particular model. It was just to kind of... Have sense of models. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's just to show how a lot of information starts coming out and it starts getting a little overwhelming. Um, it was sort of a placeholder for some of the different arguments, but, you know, there's a lot of pro and a lot of cons here. And one of the things, that I just wanted to kind of throw out here that we talked about before is one problem with a comparison type argument uh, or claim that is when a uh, comparison claim uh, A greater than B uh, creates this odd structure where people want to argue things like, well, you know, the cost is only going to be a million dollars, so go for it, right? Um, you throw out a number and you kind of are implying that. Yeah, but it's is that true though? Pro. Because you, you keep saying that, but I mean, the way I imagine this is not that if you have like a claim, the uh, lives, whatever you um, root claims, right? If the claims a comparison, if you're going to add evidence to that, wouldn't you like quote some type of calculation to prove that that's the outcome? I mean, are you really gonna just say the cost is two hundred? As, as where let, does let me put it different way. Let me let me put it a different way. Yeah, no, people would just throw stuff out. I mean, we're talking about an open crowdsourcing. You're gonna get all levels of quality, but you can get somebody who has a quality argument, and they come here going, "Oh, I just read an article that says that the lockdown is gonna cost a trillion dollars, so I'm gonna contribute it here." Um, you can't expect them to take care to model a complete structure of an argument here. No, but like um, you said, they, it, they... Doesn't, it doesn't prove or disprove it. So, I mean, the relevance is zero at that point. It, if you add that as support, the relevance is zero. Well, it's all okay. relative, right? I mean, so unless the, the, the implicit thing of what that person read was also to say that the cost of life is estimated to be something, then the claim you would add is, according to that source, the life, the cost of the life will be greater and the specific numbers don't matter. What matters is the reference oh, that, and the that, calculation. That, 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 that's in the next models, I think, when he's going into the, the conjunct claims. So. Curation would clean it up, right. But, but the, the point I'm making is, is just that you'll get a lot of arguments that you don't know if they're a pro or a con because somebody will come with some information and wants to stick it in there. Go, oh yeah, the cost is going to be one trillion dollars, and they will point to pro, an article which may be a pro or a con. Absolutely, uh, it's still exactly. relevant. It's still yeah. relevant. It's adding no, it's, information. It's, infor it's information, but that's what I consider comments. I mean, if, if you have relevant information, yeah, sure, we can have uh, a place in the system where you can add relevant information, but it's not a pro or a con because as you, as you keep pointing out, it, it, it isn't. 
but, but if that doesn't make it if it's irrelevant. a crowdsourcing platform uh people are going to input that and not be able right. to distinguish between a yeah, comment yeah. and a program themselves of course of course i'm not i'm not saying that people won't input it but the the way the platform should encourage it to then argue well this is not relevant by itself and just I like any, that. any other it, it point would, have, it would be irrelevant. i disagree it's not a pro or a con but it's not irrelevant mm -hmm. It's relevant information because it will be part of the of the equation at some point. It's irrelevant in order to uh, believe. <laughs> okay, it, it it is not relevant alone, but that doesn't make it irrelevant. That, that's what I mean. So give it. It's not relevant. Name. It's not sufficient. It's insufficient. If you want to say it's okay. insufficient, fine, but I, insufficient is not the same as irrelevant. <laughs> It's irrelevant by itself. Let's okay. put it that way. Which Fine. means the, it's the point I'm, I'm yeah. The, the, there's two points here that I, I'm trying to make with this thing. One is, as you've already pointed out, obviously it's incomplete, and that that is the type of argument you can't even tell if it's a pro or a con, right? Yeah. Um, and yet, Perfect. the other point I'm trying to make is it is in human nature to bring up uh, incomplete missing premises make arguments with missing premises that's essentially a missing premise where actually or it's a missing it's a multi-premise it's required the structure of the argument requires multi-premise arguments to support or oppose and they're coming in with missing premises and they will put that it the point is from a user interface um uh issue it will be human nature to put these things in the wrong place and then we will need ways to clean that up that's it but it should, we all agree it should be, a, we should be able to clean it up. And we should, we agree there should be mechanisms to, for example, either indicate it's insufficient or vote it down so it doesn't impact, right? Um, I think, I, I'm pretty sure we're all on the same table with that. Um, okay. So the, it, the other point here is there's just a lot of information um, and it'll be a mess without curation. We all want curation. Um, note here uh, also, and, and this is replicated everywhere, is that um, debate map has the separation between uh, truth arguments and relevance arguments. Um, what, what it actually does is it has a single node that represents both the claim and the uh, support is what's going on here. Right. This is a support, but embedded it in is the claim, and you can place arguments supporting or opposing the claim itself through the true here, and the support through the relevant part. Right. Um, also, and this carries um, over. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, Tim. I don't know if you recall, but um, uh, debate map also has an equation inputting feature as well. Right, uh, I've never used it. Well, it's not an equation inputting. It's a um, it's a specific type of multi-premise argument that it considers uh, mathematical proof. So it lets you essentially put steps of a proof into a multi-premise claim. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, and anything you you attach to the true part, if you reuse a claim somewhere else, it will copy over, whereas the relevant won't be copied over. Okay. Um, so the next step would be curated with no multi prints. And, and the first thing, as we've noted, so the relevance arguments don't really change. Um, as, as we noted, basically each true or false or a, a common structure for a true or false support is going to be a multi-premise type claim where you're stating X's and Y's and showing that X is greater than Y and is not greater than Y, right? So you end up having um, the combinatorial problem here. So you've got 9.6 trillion versus 1 trillion, uh, 1.9 trillion versus 100 billion, 1.9 trillion versus 200 billion, 1.9 versus 1 trillion, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so there's redundancy here. Um, 
not all the, the redundancy goes away after a certain point. This is reasonable, but it's a lot of work. Um, it was a lot of work for me to make this. Um, and I didn't make it fully complete, which is one of those things where with this basic structure, you essentially have a risk of not exactly an invalid, but an incomplete um, structure. Um, is you don't have an invalid argument map, but you have an incomplete argument map and I'll show you what I mean. Um, hello, oh, I didn't, I didn't put a, oh, did I put a con here? Let's see if I did. Yeah, so essentially the first thing anybody will say is with, with any, and, and this, this I would say extends to any mutually exclusive um, claim, set of claims is one automatic argument against any claim in a set of mutually exclusive claims is this is false because one of the other claims is true. So essentially to have it be full and complete, um, and we can go into the whys you want that, I guess the main why is scoring um, or somehow otherwise showing, there's two, two reasons, scoring. Um, and another one is connecting all the uh, mutually exclusive claims. If the base map model doesn't have a way to um, explicitly declare a, a mutually exclusive claim relationship, you risk losing that information if people don't attach it to the con side of things. Did that make sense? In other words, uh, if it's A or B or C mutually exclusive, then uh, automatically an argument against A is no because B or no because C. Um, if you don't do that, then if you say A, no because B, there's no way to automatically see that there's also a C out there that is mutually exclusive with it. Um, users can, uh, to some degree, be expected to do that because it's natural for if somebody says, no, because the, for example, it's going to cost 9.6 trillion and the economy is only going to be 1 trillion. It's natural for somebody who believes differently to say, no, that's not true because it's going to cost 2 trillion, right? Um, and again, you, you, you note that what I've said here is just the argument, I, I, I've put the, the um, multi-premise arguments as the counter to this one, but it would be sufficient to counter this one just by saying no, because the, the cost of the economy will be 2 trillion. In that case, it would be a sufficient counter argument. So you could say that, you know, a full curation of this, should it, remove that as a, as a counter to the support or not. That's actually debatable about how, you know, what the pattern should be here. Um, it happens to be that, you know, this is handled in a lower layer as we go down of the construction of the proof that this one is right, right? The construction is essentially the two premises are both supporting uh, arguments to this statement which is the value of life saved will be 9.6 trillion and the estimated cost of the damage will be 1 trillion. Um, there's a discussion then of, you know, okay, it's not explicit that these two are an and and both are necessary. Users could read this and figure it out for themselves. Um, it gets harder to do that if people are supporting it with lots of other types of arguments. Um, which is also possible. I think I put in here some examples of other types of arguments. Uh, where did I put it? Like here, the lockdown will have a negative total impact of public health is what somebody might have argued against the general statement of the life saves, right? Um, this this yeah I'll, I'll, we'll go into this some more um 
at, uh, under the more simplified models, I think it might be an easy place to discuss that. Um, so, okay, so you have this construction here. Um, and this one right here needs to be broken down. It turns out to be um, an argument you can either argue directly or you can turn, break, argue with another multi premise argument, which is you know, the conversion, the mathematical conversion from um, lives and value per life into the total um, result, right? But in each of these steps, as we would want it, you can place other kinds of arguments. This isn't the only kind of argument one could make here, right? Um, that's fun. Um, in here, we have that structure again, where the value will be 9.6 trillion. No, it'll be 10 trillion. No, it'll be 1.9. No, it'll be 10 billion. No, it'll be, right? Um, this is the case without any overlap too, and without you know the whole range and set logic that we've talked about that makes it even more complicated about. I know it'll be at least one trillion, right? Um, so that's an extra level of complexity that we would have to wrestle with at some point. Or not, just allow the complexity to grow. <laughs> uh, uh, my goal would be to make this as manageable and readable as possible. Um, it, it, note, note here also, this, this is debate map um, doing its magic in terms of reusing claims. This is an argument. This argument is copied over and over again for every one of these. In fact, what, what you can see is it creates a, a cyclical graph here, right? Um, I'll, I'll do the cyclical graph on a simpler one, hold on. The value of a single human life is 9.6 million, okay. We can do that one. Because again, you have mutually exclusive results of what is the value that we should use to, um, per human life, right? Uh, I don't think I fully map this one out. This is a place where you have inconsistencies, right? I didn't fully map this out, um, which means you really should have, if there are three mutually exclusive values, you should have two arguments against each one every time, right? Um, so I didn't fully do that. But anyway, you can see that it creates an infinite loop because it's reusing the arguments, which is cool. I like that. Um, uh, any anyone want to make any comments on this? Well, so I, far? The, what you're showing me is clear reasons why you wouldn't map concrete numbers in an argument map in the first place, and, and that's that's why I stick. Wouldn't with map that. what? You wouldn't map what? Again, I, I wouldn't add concrete numbers like that as arguments. They're not arguments, they're references. They're, they're like the data you pull in to make an argument. Like all, all of these specific points, typically you would bundle together in order to make your points rather than, I mean, an argument map, in my opinion, is not well suited to model this. It makes so much more sense for me to say, well, if, if your, your claim is a comparative claim, you just someplace have a source that indeed does the calculation, whatever calculation you will, and you just mold it and whatever is the best way to mold it, being a, be the mathematical formula, be the a full text argument, and you just say, oh, that's so obsessed. So how do you handle it when a user comes and says, my paper shows that it'll cost $1 trillion? That's, that's the support. And then if you want to see whether or not that's true, you go to that paper. I, I, I wouldn't model like the entire formula that that is in that paper in an argument map, it's, it's uh, moth. It's not I, I, an entire I, formula. It's, it's, it's data people are gonna be providing as evidence and people will provide specific yeah, numbers as for evidence. For me, that's where an argument map stops. And it's going stops. to create, no, but you can't, are you gonna stop people from putting that in? How are you gonna handle the fact that people are putting this in? And the fact that they're creating infinite loops by arguing against each other with their own answer to. Steven, you're, you're, you're partly right. 
an argument map is not the right way to model this, but that just means that modeling argumentation is broader than argument maps because it's still part of modeling argumentation. Uh, argument maps are a very narrow way of representing argumentation. I'm, I agree with the, the, the the finding, but not with the conclusion. It's just we have to broaden our notion of what it means to map argumentation beyond argument maps, pro con argument maps. Yeah, I'm not certain what that means. I mean, what it means is, for example, for example, you say I'd, I'd model that differently and you'd want something. I agree. I would have a totally different way of modeling something that is in like this sentence what we're speaking about is we have various estimates and i plug them on the x-axis and i do a kind of probability distribution of estimates and uh have a kind of average or medium or whatever statistical thing to say combine the estimates about economic cost combine the estimates about um, but it, 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 would, it would require a method. I mean, that's what, for example, systematic review is doing in, in literature, right? I mean, what, what you need is you need to have a common method to describe all these methods. You need to have some sort of, of a common effect size notation, all these things. I mean, the yeah, only exactly. way you, you there, can pour structure into that is if there's a common structure. And that common structure is not an argument map. It's very domain specific to whatever exactly point you're trying point. to make. Exactly my point, I agree. But it is also part of the argumentation. What I'm saying is you need a domain specific, yeah. extremely ad hoc uh, map to take all these things. Yes. And some, some of those things, but by the way, it's, but what I'm saying is it's not disjoint from argumentation. This is still part of the argumentation domain, even if it's not part of the it's information, argument map domain. It's information that's relevant to bring up in the arguments, but I don't no, see the it's... problem with simply, uh, as Jamie does, have a, a static immutable link where you point to and you summarize whatever that claim seems to infer as a claim. Like there, there, there's the study even... by blah, 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 it all shows that the cost would be greater than the, that, that's the point you're trying to make. Just do that and uh, link to an ISBN number and you're done. What I'm trying to say is these things- I, are I, not... I have- uh, let, let me finish quickly and then, yeah. There, it, it's not- this is input to that. It goes both ways. Like, for example, I could imagine on my XY graph putting an argument saying, well, the value has to be higher than this because blah, blah, blah. So there can be arguments that go into the graph. It's not just the math feeds the graph. It's the arguments feed the graph, feed the, feed the arguments, feed the graph. It, it's a, we will have to do ad hoc stuff. As, uh, that mixes arguments and mathematical considerations. And I think this is part of what we're designing. Tim. Yeah, so this gets into the reason we're designing the CD in the first place, which is at some point, if you cut it off at the point of say, academic papers or you know, modeling, models or uh, whatever, um, that's the line you're drawing at the point that this discussion is going to be canonical. Um, so the question is, are, are we, do we want to design a system that can answer the question, how much, or answer the question for each person and, and centralize all the information about it, uh, all the arguments for and against, how much we estimate the cost of a lockdown would be. If, we don't want to centralize those arguments, then I would say we're not really helping the accumulation of knowledge any further than academia has done so far. We're not improving that state in any way. Um, and that to me is not something I desire. I desire to centralize to some degree um, where people are arguing these questions. I, I agree, it's, you're it's talking good about to- More than centralization, you're talking about somehow automatically calculating and comparing because I have nothing against centralizing, no. but it's for me the same as just having a list of links of all studies that show data one way or the other. I mean- Well, I, first of all, those, those studies, um, yeah, but you still need a structure that says, 
the you, you need to gather around the cost of the lockdown will be one trillion dollars right you no. need to gather that in a single no, you, place what, what you want is if you have a claim that relies on the cost of the economy you want to dare centralize all sources that estimate the cost of the economy that that's what you want to do that's what centralization means and nothing there has to say that it's all the ones that say it's one trillion I mean, it's probably going to be only one study that says it's one trillion. It would be very surprising. I, I think, yeah, I, I think that um, scientific academic papers are too unreadable for the average person. And yet a lot of the information that's in there um, could be absorbed by the average person if it were structured in a way that said, like a tweet, you know, uh, CO2 contributes to global warming or whatever, you know, yeah. you break it down, you go step by step and there's still, you know, within a single long form scientific but I'm, I'm paper. Okay with, I'm okay with modeling CO2, CO2 contributes to global warming, but it's something totally different than the whole example, which is in front of you. No, okay, right but, but uh, the cost of the lockdown to the economy is going to be decided or is going to be calculated by economists who will write papers on it. And the paper is going to be full of claims. And other economists are going to want to take in issue with the individual claims within that paper. And currently they don't have a way to do that. Well, they do, but uh, not, not in a way that's accessible to the public. And I agree right, not in a way, and not in a way that's interlinked in the way that, and centralized, right, that we would like. Yeah. All we'll have is quotes uh, that this paper has been quoted by this one. We don't even know if it's an opposing quote or, or supporting and probably partial and saying, I agree with that part, but not that part. And we so, have to be able to know the life of each claim. I also don't disagree there, but the claims are so context specific in that case that trying to think that you can make them canonical outside of the context of that paper. I mean, if you write a review for a paper, no, no, right, no, no, it's, no, no, it's no, not no, about... No, no, no. Each, each claim stands on its own. Each claim is a claim that can stand on its own. If you say not that in a paper, the not levels... in a paper. And when, when you argue that a paper has flaws, it, it's usually even in the context of that paper. If you argue this method is not suitable, it's because of the type of participants they enroll of. It's the full context of the paper. You, you are, are, just... you, are you saying that that are you saying that academic papers are incapable or do not make claims as we understand them? which we have generally agreed can be context-free or are you saying that the claims of scientific papers are somehow a unique or distinct thing from well that that's a false dichotomy yes. i'm saying that that well, the I, type I, of claims i, that I, I bring it up as, as an impossible situation because i don't see how your logic works yes there are yes there so are claims made in academic papers that that can be applicable in a broader context yes there are claims that are so highly specific that they will only apply to that specific paper and when what i'm saying is that the typical type of things that you're arguing here with that would result in one trillion or two trillion or 1.5 trillion they are the ones that are typically highly specific to one specific paper where it might be that they used the wrong uh, uh, normalization of data or this or that. I mean, it can be so many things where you will have to pull in the entire context of that paper to make that claim canonical, at which point it's, it's no, fully you relevant. Would, because you would say, paper. no, because each claim is, is its own debate, right? All you would need to say is that this, but within this the paper, paper that supports point. this outcome. And then people could debate whether or not the paper states the outcome. And well, that well, breaks down into the, the, the subclaims. And that's what happens in an argument map. It's a tree that gets very fine grained and detailed for those who care about it. But, yeah, but if it doesn't about... build up on itself, then it's not doing its job. And in I'm... fact, you could identify gaps in the reasoning of I'm not against that, Timothy, but it's, it's not three, building on itself. It's a tree specific to that one paper at that point. No, but That's okay. What, what, what often what but often happens in the paper worth, yeah. quickly, quickly, okay. quickly is you have this. I agree up to a point. There's an ultra specific contextual claim in the paper that is proven by the paper. But there's also you know in the conclusion section, it's this generalizes to this broader claim, and it's a, it's a not full support. It's you know somewhat weak probabilistic evidence 
mill to the grist, uh, grist to the mill, sorry. Uh, but often the ultra specific claim is highly specific and very hard to reuse, but it is very clearly connected to a more generic claim and is said to be evidence. And then you can argue, is this proper evidence or not? But I mean, you can distinguish, this is the ultra specific claim and this is the broader claim that it's trying yeah. to support and make the connection on that basis of the basis of the modular claim, which is often explicit in the paper. Which so would be- see that as a problem. Which would be the claim that ends up in the argument map, yes. Which says that the cost is greater than- No, but I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying the, the ultra specific claim also makes it in the argument map because it is taken to be evidence for the broader claim. And, yes. and so it belongs. Uh, I'd like to point out something that, that we're maybe forgetting, um, which is claims will appear in the argument, argument map to the extent that human beings decided it was worth putting in there. So I'm, I'm not saying it has to be that every single paper, every single claim is going to be there. Um, I'm saying that when somebody uses that paper to support the $1 trillion outcome and people start to contest it, it will be filled out according to the debate that people have about whether or not but it really supports that. I, try to walk through a use case where there is an existing claim that says the damage done to the economy is one trillion, where it's not that specific paper. I mean, that the point is that specific numbers you're pulling out of thin air here are the, num the specific claims that are made in papers and in specific studies. The, the types of claims that people use in everyday no, argumentation do not mention specific numbers. I think maybe you're mixing the specific case with the more generalized use case, which is, for example, if we take the case of a life is worth $10 trillion, right? A uh, hundred million dollars. Why would anyone right? make that claim? It is made. It, it, it has been made. In fact, it is used, wait, no. It, it is a standard economist. Economists have kind of standardized on that amount. If you go to Wikipedia, you'll find um, variations, and I pulled some of them out here for the example, but you'll find variations on how much is a life worth. There's, there's uh, insurance companies that have their value. There's the Department of Transportation of the US that came out with its value. There's a generally standardized value that economists have and they've measured it. And this is what people would argue is how can you do that? Well. They wrote papers, they measured it according to actually how people's economic behavior depended in terms of spending more uh, on healthcare and things like that. So there's, there's a whole set of logic around where, how they came up with that number. Mm -hmm. And that was debated, right? And it would be great if it could be centralized and captured in one place. Absolutely. And, and by the way, what was your point, Stephen? I'm not sure for me, it's almost a non sequitur. You're saying, oh, that number would only comes from a paper. And so what? I, I would list it as a, a reference someplace. I, I, I don't think an argument map is well suited with adding such concrete numbers. If you want the concrete numbers, sure, you can list all the different sources with all the different numbers. You can even list a reference to the paper as a supporting argument. But I don't yeah, see well, how yeah. pulling out specific numbers to pour them in specific formula that I mold in an argument map. Does the user and I agree, good? and that's why reason why I'm not happy with argument maps because they don't allow me to do this. But, uh, but Steve, Steve, are you proposing <laughs> to to uh, have this claim in there like uh, it's worth doing the lockdown and then as a whatever pro argument citing the paper or how do you see it? Let, let, let's look at, for example, let's look at Kialo. Let's do, I mean, this has been discussed. Let's look what real people do in real scenarios on an argument map. That's what I'm suggesting. And what, what I'm saying is- And I proposed from the beginning, Kialo is exactly the example of what should be our starting point for making something better. Or, 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 even a, or even a counter example. For me, the fact that this is so hard to do in an argument map is a reason to dismiss argument map as the basic uh, UX uh, interface for this because a lot of very important things are hard to express in an argument map. But that, I'm, I'm saying it's not an argument. It's, it's a calculation. It's a formula. It's math. If, if you, yeah, if, and if it you needs, an argument it needs a different is, kind of interface. Is, and let's discuss the interfaces that allow not, representing this. It's not. People are going to it, make those arguments based on numbers, and they're going to want to respond to them. So yes. to the extent that you have claims and, and debates, you know, responses, 
um, <clears throat> you're going to want to capture it in, in our argument map or an improved argument map or whatever we end up building. Uh, my only point is that when um, people do that, you end up with this explosion of um, complexity because or, or quantity of opposing arguments in the case of mutually exclusive claims. Jimmy? Just to hop on and say, um, the way that Kialo, as recently as I've looked, manages this problem is one of the reasons why, um, kind of uh, similar to how Tim was saying, um, one of the reasons why it's not sufficient. Because if I'm looking at a claim and this has happened, I'm looking at a claim and I want to go look at the reference that someone cites, um, I'm like, oh, there's actually a problem with this reference. They're pulling it out of context or something like that. And like, how can I argue with that? Yeah, Alan doesn't have relevance. Well. That, I mean, we, we all agree and we already have an ML relevance. We, we agree that relevance is important. You need to be, argue, be able to argue about relevance. That's one of the main problems of KL, yes. But that, that's, I think, and related to And you need to, to be this. able to argue about the veracity of the references as well. You know, like a, a picture of an electron, uh, an electron micrograph picture of a coronavirus uh, was taken and submitted as evidence. Yes. And then it turned out the picture of something else that was addressed can, in a different You can paper do both. Paper says, oh. You can do both because what I'm suggesting is that you add the paper as support for your claim. So if you disagree mm -hmm. with the paper, you can add opposing arguments to that support. If you agree with relevance, you can add opposing arguments to. Yeah. The so you can do both of these. But what I'm arguing against is adding the whole formula that's written up in the paper, which is very paper specific and other papers are going to do different formulas and maybe I don't even know how you're going to combine these, but adding all of that in an argument map. I don't see the value. Okay, but, but, Except right. as so, a reference. So, yeah, no, but the, the goal here <laughs> isn't to, the goal of the formula I is separate from what I'm talking about here, essentially. The goal of uh, most of the structures that I'm proposing are to better organize the debate. Let, 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 let me, okay, let, let, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So you're presupposing yeah. here that you want to debate the one trillion as opposed to, like you wanna argue that the one trillion is wrong. I'm saying that's not, probably what's going to happen. What you're going to say is the method used in the paper is wrong. The participants recruited in the paper were the representative. Those are the type of arguments you would typically use to rebut the paper, not like, oh. The no, you're talking about a paper. But how do you no, argue, the, 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 how do you argue the lockdown will be worth it in the live save? OK, can, can I, Stephen, I see part of your point, the, the fact that there is something, there is a formula inside the paper that's an economic formula and that we don't necessarily want to model or, or just use it, that we want to use as a reference rather than having the whole modeling system. Like, yes, there is a distinction there. That said, I still think there is something that is in our scope. That is, for example, let's say we're just focusing on what would be the estimate of the lockdown? Because it is part of that conversation. And I could totally see somebody saying, according to this paper, it falls in this, you know, it falls in this range, or it's at least more than this, or it's no more than this. And I could see a kind of linear scale and saying, this paper puts it in that range, this paper puts it in that range, this paper puts it in that range. And if you want to argue that it's lower than this or higher than this, well, these are the papers you need to refute. And eventually, and there I agree with Tim, go into the arguments and why is this argument not valid, not relevant? Now the formula is a reference and why is that formula not relevant or why was it misused or why this, why that? It's at the argumentation level. But being able to say, when you're saying it's more than this, you're uh, actually, you need to refute a range. But just add a claim, of, the cost is greater than that, and that all the papers that assess it as greater than that. If exactly. That's, what you, you... That, that, that's precisely what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I need to be able to make a kind of range refutation, saying because I'm saying it's higher than this, I need to argue against all that say that it's below and vice versa. The, and this is definitely something which I think is in scope for us because these conversations do happen. Somebody who says it's more than this, less than that, 
we need to argue for a whole range of arguments. Yeah, but the reason you want to model the actual calculation again has something more to because I, I just told you the solution. You can add a claim, the cost is greater than that. It's plain text and people no, add no, all no, the no, 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 no. So we, we, why why do you need to do the calculation? Why do you need to formalize the exact numbers? Because no, no, because because I want to know when I say it's greater than this, which of the other arguments am I arguing against? There's 50 arguments saying it's between this and this, it's greater than this, it's around there, whatever. So there's 50 of them. And oh, I'm yes. saying, oh, I, I'm saying it's this one. Well, that means I'm agreeing with some, disagreeing with some. I want to know exactly which ones autom automatically. I think but for me, that's- installed. You're again presupposing that there's specific claims that bring up specific numbers. I am. I'm telling you, it's much more likely and much more constructive on an argument map level to simply, what is the point of trying to argue for and then pull in I, the sources that- make it, that conclusion no no but but that's because you in your sentence you have to put in an argument map <laughs> that's a presupposition i do not share <laughs> the oh, question sorry, is in an argument true. in an argument i'm saying in an argument it's more constructive when i give a range that i'm aware of all the ranges i'm disagreeing with if your conclusion you're making is a specific value sure yes. but why is your, the conclusion you're making a specific value because maybe I'm arguing for that value. Maybe but that's that's not a very realistic use case. How is it not a realistic use case? People do it all the time. Especially when the scientists come into the debate. So uh, economists value human life at $10 million. How is a lay person supposed to enter that debate? But that why are you having that debate? But because you're trying to figure out if you should do the lockdown debates. or not. At the very least, how, how do you measure that a lockdown is going to be worth it? How do you how do you solve that dilemma? Yeah, if, that, if that's not a use case, I don't know what we're talking about. You can't solve that dilemma without weighing the impact of each side. You know there's going to be harm to the economy. Otherwise, you wouldn't be talking about it. You know that lives are going to be saved or you can debate about how many lives are gonna be saved or whatever. At least you're gonna debate about how many lives will be saved. And that's a number, right? You could, you could sure box it in ranges. So I think it's gonna be at least a million. I think it's gonna be a few thousand. You're still talking about the same thing with mutually exclusive outcomes, right? Yeah, and again, I, I don't think, I mean, sure, if, if that's the level of disagreement, I think it comes down to proposing opposing models and models are highly specific to what you're modeling and yes you can have competing outcomes to that you, model and i would just group all of those to the think, actual thing you're debating, down to, which in this case I, is in this case is is a cost greater or not that's what people are debating the numbers the facts the models that people are pulling in that's why they're doing it it's not because they're debating the ten thousand. they're debating the no 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 i didn't it's a very that. simple it's a very simple question how do you resolve in the canonical debate, the problem of mutually exclusive claims. A dialectic or a yes, no doesn't do it because it adds the complexity of an infinite loop. And I've seen it over and over and over again. And when you're saying people are debating num models, not numbers, up to a point true, up to a point false. I mean, if I'm saying it's more than 10,000 because you know we've agreed on the other par three, two parameters of the three parameter equation here we have, uh, we've agreed on those two, but we're still arguing on one of them, then yeah, I care about the number. And we can have different models that arrive at the same number. And frankly, I don't care. I'm saying this, I'm arguing for that number because it's important for me, for the higher argument, it's too much. And if I can achieve it by different models, and somebody else will care about the model and not care about the number, which is also fine. Uh, related to what you said, Timothy, like infinite loops, I, by the way, don't see as a problem. Um, again, my main- I don't see the uncovering... infinite loops as a problem. I, I don't see okay. it and I went down and showed you. I, the problem I see is the difficulty of organizing the argumentation when it's a choice between multiple options instead of just a true false. Yeah, I mean, we have talked about mutual exclusive stuff. I, I 
on, on a more generic level, yes, I can see some value in that, but I don't think pointing to these this type of stuff in front of here is a is a good use case for that because I, I, I there's probably more relevant things to model in terms of you're, you're, um, you're welcome to add use cases to this one. I mean, we can change it. Literally, we can change this. It, ignore the numbers um, and treat it as it's going to save a lot of lives. It's going to save some lives. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Going to save no lives. It's, that, that's much more realistic. Numbers, to, to, no, yeah. no, no. That, I, I actually disagree with that. It I only depends. That... On, it depends on the domain of people who are holding the debate, because economists and virologists and and you know health experts are going to get into the numbers. Um, the average person, no. But I want to support at all levels of expertise. In fact, I want to invite people with the real expertise into the debate. No, that's true. And but what I'm saying is the, the a lot or many or not that many. I mean, those are hedge words. And at some point, it's like, OK, how many is too much? It's it's when you get into the brass tacks that you actually can resolve those. Things. Yeah, but it's all about finding the disagreements. It's not about yes, resolving that, the disagreements. But finding the disagreements means finding how much is too much for you. Yeah, exactly. So you need numbers at some point. The how yeah. much is a number? Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, numbers the, the, the numbers, again, I would add as papers. No, what I'm saying is the, 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 the linear scales, and my goodness, it's, I agree the, the inner models of the articles are references, but the numbers, the resulting numbers are important to model ex explicitly because that allows a, be a better notion of what's mutually exclusive. And much easier to if, if you want them. to model it in the argument at that level yeah totally agreed but i simply don't see the benefit to uh, that's what tim was showing he's not done but i see the benefit around the first uh, but, but but draw, i mean i think you can imagine what it would look like and right like how you would then add like uh money conversions uh inflation uh i mean yeah this is this is just no 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 this this is this is incremental first of all you're 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 arguing you're going between levels of complexity from the specific example and the general it's not worth it because you know it's too complex for this one the model may be too complex okay but this is a general solution we're talking about and i chose a single example that happens to the economy you know it, it's a complex question right um i just want to hop in really quick I've got a really hard stop. I got to jump into another meeting. Um, but Stephen, to your point, that the, the way that you're describing is the way that we currently organize things. Um, in our COVID combo map, for example, there was the Stanford Sarah prevalence study. Um, and so like we use the reference to this study to indicate that there was only so much um, like contagious spread or something like that. The counter arguments against the study itself didn't rely on us modeling what the study had said, but we just listed the counter arguments and that like it was flawed in various ways, et cetera, et cetera. But I gotta go guys. Um, so see you later, bye. See you. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, but on the other hand to that, on the other hand, as a counter example, I listened to a podcast called Serious Inquiries Only and uh, 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 and it's not a fantastic podcast, but one of the things they do is they take complex issues like this, like the, uh, you know, is there um, more police violence against people of color than, than Caucasians, right? Um, and they'll take a paper that was written, or they'll take papers that are usually cited by one group or another as proof or counterproof or whatever, and they'll break down the claims made by the paper one by one and show why they agree or disagree with the individual claim, right? And I'm sure the people that wrote it would want to respond to that claim by claim, objection to objection or whatever. Um, so these things are happening in real life, but not being captured. And I think that the people who actually write the papers would, and would be glad that you can centralize this discussion. Anybody else has a hard stop? Oh, Stephen. Stephen, you're, you're, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm not against having argument maps about very specific claims, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to 
make this canonical and relate all of them together. I'm against formalizing these and relating them somehow. Yes, it's totally useful to, in the context of a specific paper, argue that a certain specific number represent as a claim within that paper is false. Yes, that's that's nice to have. But what you're saying is that that claim should somehow be canonicalized and be put on par with papers in another context with a different model and a different way that things are calculated. That's what I'm arguing against. So yes, it's no, I'm useful. just saying like any claim you should be able to pull out from a paper yeah. yeah, and and you should be able to treat it like any other claim, which means you provide supporting arguments and opposing yes. arguments. Yes, and Thumbs up those to that. aren't yes. going to come from the same paper. Right. What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do, the whole point was about UI here. It's not about like I'm trying, I'm not even saying we have to use formula in the system. I'm trying to show how the incremental formalization simplifies the reading and using of the model step by step. I didn't even get to the next step, which is multi-premise. But um, you know, that's all I want to show. And we can decide if we think it's worth including these structures into, into the model, right? I, I strongly believe it is because it makes it so much more readable and manageable, right? Um, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry we got caught up on mm -hmm. specifically numbers as, as parameters because by no means do any of us think that numbers are the only place you have mutually exclusive uh, claims. Right? But it, it has been the example that we've been using for the past three meetings. Right, is... right. And, and now you're, yeah. I, you know, I do think that numbers would come into it at some point, but that's that's something we can talk about as a separate discussion of how you deal with um, mutually exclusive claims in general, right? Each, each new structure is something that's a separate debate about whether or not we wanna include it. I have a hard stop. Um, so, you know, I guess we'll, we'll have to table the rest of my- uh, uh, So Mike and Twine, you can join tomorrow? No, so I cannot. What, what, what are we doing about tomorrow? Are we skipping or? No, I, I, it's up to I Felix. Invited, yeah. I invited Tal now, so it would be nice if some people would be there. Well, I can be there. I have no plans. What, what would be the oh, no. topic? Uh, actually, I'm jamming. Yeah. Is it uh, tomorrow? Insights from his, uh, because eight. I told him we're talking about logic and argumentation and mm -hmm. he has prob probably something valuable. Oh, right. There. Yeah, well, right. you could, you could, we could, you could, Reschedule him too and tell him we'll do that Friday after all. If everybody thinks that's the right thing, then I'll. The, 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 the logic and argumentation is definitely something I'd like to be involved in, but I don't want to be the one blocking things. But now, if Stephen also can't make it, if it were just me, I'd say I'll catch up too. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a group decision. Um, yeah. I tried to reschedule again <laughs> because I, uh, um, initially I told him it's Tuesday and then I said, oh no, Tuesday is uh, a bit more UX and then we can do it Wednesday. And he said, yeah, we can also have time on Wednesday. And it's, yeah. But, Sorry. Yeah. No worries. Sorry, I should have warned you. I, 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 I had forgotten the date of that thing. Apologies. No, I'll ask him if he has time on Friday. Let's see. Okay. Hey. Okay. See you next time. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, I, I was I was thinking about something. I, I zoned out a bit. Are we doing something tomorrow, even if it's not your friend, or, or is tomorrow canceled? Um, I'm always open for. I mean, who has time? Any tomorrow? kind of discussion. For I have. Me it's time. a bit a bit rushed because I have a jam session and I need to eat before. I mean, I'm up even for uh, just an informal discussion between you and me, if you want, Felix. Yeah, one on one sounds good. Okay, we'll we'll record it. Enjoy your one on one tomorrow. Yep. See you. <laughs> Thank you. See you tomorrow. Enjoy. Enjoy. Sorry.